Okay, I'm back. And um, we're going to start out here with Chapter 11, talking about um, compression, system backup, and software installation. Most of the night, I'm going to talk about system backup. Um, software installation and compression are also important. The book does a good job talking about these. The book does a very good job talking about software installation. Um, and it also, of course, will be talked about in any programming class you have. Um, and um, I, I'm, but I really want to emphasize the importance of uh, system backup. So I'm going to spend most of my time talking about system backup. Um, let me tell you a couple stories about system backup. System backups are important. They can. That's one place where you can. Um, Unfortunately, you can't make a job. You can't get a job because you did good backups. But you can certainly lose a job because you did not do good backups. Um, and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And um, backups seem like they're really simple, no problem, until things go wrong and you find out that you don't have them. Um, there's a lot of reasons you don't have them. They're boring to do. Um, no one's ever going to know the difference until you need them. Uh, yeah, until you need them. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's two good reasons why sometimes backups just don't get done and don't get done right. Um, yeah, yeah, let me tell you one of the saddest stories I can um, recall. I was um, called into a, an organization that had a disaster, and they had a backup system. Uh, this was actually a local company in the Portland area. They had um, a, um, uh, a disaster. They had, and I was called in. They had a Linux uh, machine or a couple Linux machines. They had some Windows servers. The uh, Linux server was backing up the Windows servers, as I recall. Um, they had data tapes all around the room. There was, you know, stacks and stacks of data tapes surrounding their entire office, like two or three levels of data tapes, and they were, they were labeled one for every day, and or or two or three per day. And anyway, they had a database that had things like their accounts receivable and their customer list on it. And they had uh, lost a hard drive. They were doing a recovery on, I believe, the Windows machine. And um, they didn't seem to have that, um, um, didn't seem to have, uh, when they did the recovery, they didn't have that. Um, you know, the database was kept in this big, huge database file. So it was one big, giant file. It didn't seem to be there. So they got, you know. So I got another tape off the wall and said, well, we'll go a day back. No, it's not there. Well, I got another tape. I'll go a day back. It's not there. Um, I started tearing tapes off the wall, going back, trying to find this data. It just wasn't there. It wasn't any place. Um, finally, I asked to see their backup procedure. And somebody had written a script for them that did the backups. Um, it wasn't written the way I would have written it. And I, I intuitively didn't feel really good about it. But I examined it and examined it and examined it. And I didn't see any errors. I didn't see what the problem would be. It, it appeared as though the database probably wasn't being closed when the um, um, backup was being made, and since the file was open, it wasn't being backed up. Uh, for some reason, it looked like it should be, because the, uh, the, 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 the file allowed multiple accesses at one time by multiple users. Um, also, they actually did close down their database at certain hours of day uh, of the day when the backup should have been being made. 
Um, I didn't see a major timing error between the two computer systems so that, you know, when the one guy said close down at midnight, the other guy said back up, but the other guy was might say back up at midnight, but he was actually at 4 a.m. I didn't see that sort of problem. The, the fact is I never found the problem, and I never found the data. And, you know, I really felt bad for these people. I felt just terrible. Um, but um, because they'd spent thousands and thousands of dollars, they had done everything, well, almost everything right, and they did not have their backup. And I don't know how it all ended in the end. Um, I got paid, but it was, you know, it was sort of like telling a patient that you've got terminal cancer. Um, uh, it wasn't fun. Um, it was really a bad experience. I'm telling you this because that's what happens when data tape backups don't work right and they aren't done right. And sometimes you think everything's right and it won't be done right and it won't be right. Um, their big, big, big mistake is that they didn't play what I was called call war games. With any backup system, you really, really, really have to play war games where you pretend you lose some data and you have a mock recovery. Um, that's the only way, well, even then things can go wrong, but that, that gives you much more assurance that things are going right than, than if you just do it theoretically and hope you have them when you need them. Um, I've also seen many people with um, RAID systems where um, the RAID system failed, one of the hard drives failed, and they didn't really recognize it until the other hard drive failed, and then they wondered why their RAID system didn't protect them. Um, so care must be taken with backups. Um, we'll talk a little bit here. There are several problems that you have to back up and protect against. There are physical problems. Your building can burn. Somebody can steal all your data tapes. Um, there's also different types of protection. If you've got um, accounts receivable and somebody steals your data tapes, that could be a serious, serious problem because they're stealing a lot of very private personal data. If you've got open source software on them and somebody steals all the data tapes, well, as long as you still got access to the data, that's just fine. No big deal. So uh, depending on the type of data you have will determine the type of backups you need to do. The other big question is how long do you need to have this stuff our data backed up or archived for? There really is a difference between temporary backups the things that back up your data day to day, month to month, week to week, month to month, and the data archives. You know, if you write something like the US Constitution, you want it archived in such a way that 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, 1,000 years from now, you have it. And you have, you know, we want the Bible backed up so that um, um, we have it forever, um, well, for as long as we humans inhabit the earth. We want the, or our other fundamental scriptures are um, um, the uh, basic works of Hinduism or Buddhism, whatever. Um, and those two take the very different things. Uh, one of the things I worry about with modern technology is our modern technology is better at doing temporary backups than it is at long-term backups. Most of our data, um, um, you know, paper, we, we make our paper with acid. It eats up in 20 years. It's gone. Our magnetic tapes are the book says they're good for 20 years. My experimentation says 10% of them are bad within 20 years, maybe 20%. Um, paper tape is good until it gets wet, I guess. Um, um, our media is really, 
you know, uh, we made these CDs, and I read these stories about these CDs, how they were going to be good for 200 years. And five years later, I read about something called CD rot, where actually our CDs and DVDs are going bad much, much quicker than we expected because the, the little grooves we make, at least in pressed DVDs as opposed to burned ones, are really there for a long time. They're quite, quite stable, quite good, as long as we keep things in a reasonably temperature controlled environment and whatnot. But it's ending up that the coating, the plastic coating they put on the DVDs, as I understand, is separating from the DVD itself and uh, causing the whole thing, um, uh, you know, causing light to bounce the way it shouldn't and causing the whole thing to be much less stable than the article said um, by uh, much, much, much less. Maybe we're getting 5% of the life they were promising us, or 10%. Um, OK. Um, by con contrast, you know, stone, ta uh, a stone or clay tablets are pretty good. Um, you know, they don't hold a lot of data, but it is kind of amazing um, how we have clay tablets probably written six to 8,000 years ago. I, I don't know. That we can actually read. Um, now, it's a little hard to read them in the languages they were written in and stuff. But we, we've actually been successful with very old clay tablets. Um, I just wonder how successful we're going to be with modern media when we try to read these 3,000 years henceforth. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical. but. You know, that, that is a concern. Another concern is off-site storage versus on-site storage. Really, most of us should have off-site storage for any business activity whatsoever. Uh, you can go to online storage, um, but that tends really to be pretty expensive in my mind if you've got um, um, much data to store online, and and um, it does work for certain things. Um, actually, for some things, you know, um, embed your data in a video and put it on YouTube. <laughs> they give you a huge amount of storage, or 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 something of that type. There are ways, <laughs> you know. I, actually, I do occasionally email myself something. Now that doesn't protect it from privacy. <laughs> that makes it open to the world. Um, but it does um, give me some protection against the fire or whatnot. Um, I don't think most people need fancy, expensive off-site storage. But I think everybody needs off-site storage of some sort. Um, um, and it doesn't have to be fancy and expensive. Um, what I use is I store a lot of my stuff on removable hard drives. I happen to have a, a very, very inexpensive, very large um, um, safety deposit box at my bank. I just throw it in my safety deposit box. How good is that? Well, it's pretty good for my personal data. It does have some problems. My bank is not open on weekends, so and it's not open 24 hours a day. So there are some limitations. But I have another copy around here someplace. Well, actually, I have this copy. <laughs> and, um, and, and so I find that works pretty well. Or I've used systems where I just stored things in a building across the street. Um, OK, you know, I did that in oceanography. True, if the city of Corvallis had gotten nuked uh, or something of that type, we would have lost both copies of an awful lot of valuable data. But it was better than any of the alternatives that I could get approved. And, um, and the chances of anything really bad happening to the entire city without some chance to rescue some data was pretty small. So um, you know. You do what you have to do. You make compromises. Um, and um, by and large, that was quite OK. That worked, that worked quite well. OK, in the next section, we're going to talk about compression techniques, because 
um, we can use compression to reduce the amount of data we have to store on our backups, so compression kind of goes with backups. Bye-bye.